promised myself I am not going to be the girl crying on the internet and I will not. So I'm gonna cry on the camera. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. We haven't done like a heart to heart sit down conversation in a while and I thought it's going to be nice to catch up on some questions that you guys might have. Let's get to it. You guys are kind of like my therapist right now because I usually don't like to talk about myself and my emotions and I don't have an easy time opening up to people. So this is honestly much easier than going and like talking one-on-one -on -one to a friend. How did you start on social media? I love you. My husband say we are or you are my European twin. Hello. European twin. I started in 2017. I was working three jobs. I was a nanny. I was a personal trainer and I started in social media. I was also going to college full-time. I was a nerd. I was a very good student and I was studying a lot, but I was very exhausted. I was leaving my house at like 5 a.m. in the morning and coming back sometimes at 11 p.m. because I would have classes run until like 10 30 at night and honestly it just was getting to me and it was getting harder and harder and i have decided that i can't keep going like this it was just very exhausting obviously and i decided something needs to change so in january of 2017 i have decided that i am going to post on instagram every single day regardless if it's going to take me somewhere or not and at the time fitness was popping i'm sure that you guys are aware that social media goes through phases of what's popular what's not so it started with fitness you know tiktok had a phase for tiktok dances that are now pretty much dead so there's different niches on social media so i started in fitness because i was a personal trainer and i have an education in kinesiology and fitness and nutrition so it was just a natural way of me starting with that I was working out a lot so I was just sharing kind of my workout routines after a couple of months of doing that I really wanted to get some professional photos and I remember reaching out to photographers and they told me their rates and at the time me and Randy were absolutely broke we had no money whatsoever Randy was a marine I was doing my little jobs and going to school full-time and we couldn't afford any of the photo shoots so that was the moment that Randy have decided that he's going to help me he picked up a camera taught himself fully how to be a photographer and videographer and the rest is history honestly without Randy there wouldn't be me and our careers so that's why we're going so strong and so hand in hand because we do work together since 2017 Randy quit military and started working with me and together we have created the platforms that we have i think it is a very misunderstood job i think a lot of people think it's very easy and that you take photo and make money but they don't realize the amount of work it actually takes to start making money and you are never off you're constantly working and if you're not keeping up with what's going on in the world and changing the trends and staying true to yourself it's not going to work so it's just much more than taking a photo and posting it on social media do you visit your home country honestly this this is the longest since a long time ago that i haven't been home it's been a year and a half usually i try to go at least once a year or twice a year usually during spring and then christmas but because of some things we had going on in in our lives that i'm going to touch on um we weren't able to go as often last year as we wanted to we had to skip on some christmases and we didn't go this spring because of other travel opportunities we got but i try to go at least once a year which part of poland are you from i'm from the south it's the city called gliwice it's near krakow if you're aware you can google it it's a beautiful city very safe kind of small comparatively to like los angeles or new york but in poland it's a pretty big city where do you get your facials done as of recent i've been obsessed with the place in costa mesa that's called glow med spa their facial is like a two and a half hour facial that includes exfoliation and moisturizing and massage and oh it's just the best even thinking about it makes me want to just 
fall asleep because it's so relaxing and your skin is absolutely beautiful after so if you live in oc i highly recommend glow med spa and samantha is the best so if you're looking for a spot make sure to check them out do you plan to have kids one day absolutely me and randy talk about it all the time i think we're in a position where i i don't think i know that we're in a position that when it happens it happens we're not doing anything super preventative right now so if it happens it's it's cool but if it doesn't in the next year it's also cool we're not actively trying because we do travel a lot and in the past couple of months we've had so many travel opportunities and traveling is mine and Randy's biggest passion so it's very hard to say no and I think we are ready but we also are aware that it's a big sacrifice on, of our freedom that we truly so much enjoy right now but we definitely want to have kids ideally two so they can be besties for life how much did you spend on your vacation in europe including the flights this is a very difficult question and one of the questions was how do we travel so much how do we have money to travel so much we do social media for a living it's our full-time job social media is marketing and when you think about it back in the day people would put or back in the day people still do it people pay money to put their ads on billboards on in the newspaper on tv so people pay influencers either with monetary values like a flat fee or commission or in exchange for promoting a resort or hotel lines we get to stay in those places for free so a lot of our traveling is free travel in exchange for sharing our experiences with our audience have you ever been in sweden i have i actually worked in stockholm for polish people money in sweden was extremely good so me and my friends a couple of friends went to stockholm to work there for three months and it was the best time ever what's your workout routine my workout routine was extremely strict and very organized for for multiple years and in the past three months it got a little bit more relaxed and lax because of all the traveling we've been doing so it started with a lot of running a lot of high intensity i'm talking back in the day a lot of weightlifting. that's actually how i got into fitness i was always a very active child i was running i was playing basketball i was dancing i've i've always had some sort of sport and movement going on in my life but since i came to the states it slowed down a little bit and and then I picked up weightlifting. I became a personal trainer for multiple years. And as of recent, I kind of slowed things down. I think our life is just so wild right now and crazy. We literally travel, come back home for five days and then leave again and come back home for a few days. And there's just a lot of stressful things happening in our lives. So I think it's important to keep that in mind when you plan your workouts routine as well, not to push yourself or try to do things that are not serving you. I think a lot of high intensity things that I've been doing have not been really serving me. I think everybody talks about the cortisol level levels recently i think that's something that wasn't really talked about before but i think it was causing a lot of anxiety anger and almost depression in me so i switched my workouts to more low impact workouts now i do pilates i actually went on a run for the first time in three months this morning but i stopped running i started walking more i'm not saying running is bad i am not saying weightlifting is bad it's just something that doesn't work for me at this very moment but i like to incorporate one session of weightlifting maybe every couple of weeks or, or so i'm not saying i'm not going to be back to fully weightlifting but as of right now it's more slowing things down pilates walking i do weightlifting class when we're back home and i do berries which is a boot camp where you sprint and do weightlifting half and half once in a while as well as well is united states a country to stay or a stopover well for me it was supposed to be a stopover country because i was supposed to come here for my exchange program finish the au pair program and go back home to study medicine i got into medical school but i met that guy that rocked my world <laughs> we decided to get married and the stopover became a place to stay so for me it's a place to stay 
it's not a perfect place and we have those conversations all the time where would we rather be i think europe is beautiful there's so many beautiful places in the world but i think the amount of opportunities we have in united states are truly unmatched i think that this country has a lot to work on but i'm also grateful for everything that it has given me and i can't take that for granted kind of reversing back to what i was saying before what do you do for work how can you afford to take months after months of vacation i just wanted to add that from your guys's perspective and i fully understand because that's also our job to show the, the locations beautiful locations in a beautiful way but i just want to make this clear we never get vacation imagine going somewhere and not being able to lay down or like enjoy the food the drinks and so on like whenever we travel we actually work way more than we work when we're home because we're constantly taking videos taking photos editing responding to emails there's just so much behind the closed door that you guys don't see. You only see the final product of what we're posting on social media. But behind all of that is hours and hours of waking up for sunrises, staying up until the sun sets, constantly shooting, looking for spots to shoot, locations and so on. So there's just so much more to our job that you guys don't see. So we truly don't get vacation. I remember the last time me and Randy actually took vacation was two years ago when my best friend got married in Turkey and they asked us to stay off our phones for a couple of days just to kind of enjoy the time with them and that was the first time probably in seven years that we took two or three days off being on our phones and working and genuinely being in a moment and enjoying the time with our friends. Once again, I would have not changed my job for anything else I think it's the best job for me and for Randy, but it's a very challenging and difficult job that requires a lot of working that you guys don't see. Could you give me the name of the SIM card that you use when you travel? We have used USIMs during our travel time this past summer. It works, works amazing and I highly recommend. Did you ever have a big argument with Randy that one of you considered breakup? and describe that's a very funny question because me and randy have never really dated prior to getting married and of course we thought as i mentioned at the beginning of our relationship we're absolutely broke and i think a lot of tension and fights in relationships are caused because of money unfortunately if there is no money if you can't afford food if you can't afford bills of course there is going to be tension between two people so we were fighting a lot i wouldn't say we were ever in a place of a breakup right we had some heated conversations not conversations fights we were younger too i think we chilled out a lot i'm very stubborn randy is very stubborn we like to prove the point both of us so of course there is going to be a lot of tension but i think throughout the years we learned how to over communicate things and communicate things and i think we just lay everything out on the table there is no like assumptions in between us anymore so i think a lot of fighting was stemming also from assuming what the other person means and we learned how to communicate better we're also older we've been together for almost 10 years so i think throughout those years we kind of learn how to navigate through our relationship the only moment I can recall that was clo close to the breakup, but we were, we were not really dating. After a month of hanging out, I knew I was supposed to go back home and we were hanging out every single day. Something just switched in me and I decided I needed to push Randy away. I think that I was... That was a breakup. That was kind of a breakup. So that was the only moment where I, I think I was scared because I knew I'm going back home, I'm starting to like this guy, like I feel very safe, very different from my previous relationship. I really enjoyed just being heard and seen so much, but also at the same time it was a very scary place to be because I knew I have to go back home so I didn't want to get attached. I was a raging asshole raging asshole which is not cool don't do it communicate to the other person what's going on in your head other than just being silent and pushing somebody away you may hurt that other person and it's not their fault like it wasn't his fault but he stuck around 
and here we are. So if he didn't stick around, who knows where we would be, but we're here because he was very persistent and he was like, you know what? You're going through something, but I'm gonna be around. I'm gonna wait this one out and we will see what happens. And here we are. So I'm glad he actually stayed because wouldn't be doing this life with anybody else. How are you for real? As I said, what you guys see on the internet and on social media is only the things that we let you see. And of course we're human. And I know that just by judging of Instagram or TikTok or social media, our lives look really glamorous. This year especially has not been so glamorous. This is actually the first time I am talking about this and opening up about this. It's been very challenging, but also I've been looking for a good moment to share this with you guys. I think it's important to share the good things and the bad things that are happening in your life so you realize that we are real people and we have real shitty problems that we have to deal with and things happen to us that happen to other people as well. So this year has been pretty shitty for us regardless of how it looks on social media. It's been very difficult and challenging. We had four animals for nine years. One of our dogs, Leon the Boxer, had cancer. He was diagnosed two years ago, I believe with lymphoma, which is a very aggressive cancer and it's very common in boxers. And at the time of the diagnosis, he was given two months to live. I have never in my life dealt with grief. I have never in my life dealt with death. So I truly didn't know what to expect. It was extremely scary news to receive. The only person, my grandma died when I was nine or 10 years old. That's not something that you really remember. So as an adult, that was the first time dealing with that. We have decided to opt out of chemo because we know that it's very hard on a body and for dogs, it's not really that fun to be receiving that every month and the quality of life is dropping significantly and the vet gave us a different option to try the steroid that might have extended his life to maybe four to six months. He was not given a lot of time even with the steroid, but we decided to do that and he was doing the steroid treatment for a year and a half, which is obviously significantly longer than the time we thought he's going to be alive. And he was doing great at the beginning. He was truly a trooper. He, you could never tell that he was struggling with anything. And in the past couple of months, in the beginning of this year, he started to decline seriously, very, very fast. He had serious infection going on. He had a lot of, a lot of things going badly with him. So at the beginning, and I promised myself, I am not going to be the girl crying on the internet and I will not. So if I have to stop this video and take a pause and walk away, I'm going to do so and come back because I'm not going to be crying. At the beginning of the year, we kind of knew that things are turning into a really bad direction and it's going to be time where we have to make a decision to say goodbye to him. And as a pet owner, I truly do not wish that on anybody. Having to make that decision is one of the most difficult decisions I think I've had to make in my entire life. And for some people, a pet or a dog is just a pet or a dog. For us, if you know us personally or if you see us on the internet, we rescue all the animals. We go places and we save animals. To us, animals are a part of the family. They're our babies, they're our children. The amount of money and time we spent trying to save Leon is insane. We, we've done everything we possibly could to save him and to give him the best couple of years possible. But yeah, we had to make that decision at the beginning of the year and in March we had to say goodbye to Leon. Um, it was a terrible time. We were not dealing with it really well for a couple of days. We were drinking, we were smoking weed just to kind of numb our emotions. We did not know what to do with ourselves. 
and that's when some of the travel opportunities came up and i always say that those travel opportunities truly saved us because we were getting into a very toxic spiral of dealing with that because we did not know how to deal with it any other way and we started traveling much more we kept ourselves distracted and that was kind of our way of numbing the pain and things started to get a little better if you dealt with grief if you lost somebody in your life i'm sure you know that with time things get better and that's truly the only thing that helps i still feel like a piece of my heart is missing forever but it is the only thing that helped it's the time and keeping yourself busy and distracted. A couple months after, our cat, Siggy, who we adopted, stopped breaking down. Okay, I'm not gonna cry. I said I'm gonna cry on the camera. Couple months after, we noticed that our cat, Ziggy, doesn't feel that well. He wasn't really eating well, he wasn't playing, he was hiding. He didn't want to come out and he would have some colds before that it would just pass so we didn't think it's anything crazy so we decided to bring him to the vet and the vet told us he also has cancer and that we can't leave the vet office with him that he's suffering and we need to say goodbye to him immediately and that was only two months after saying goodbye to leon so that was just kind of like a second slap on the face this year that we had to deal with. It's been months since both of that happened. We kept ourselves distracted with a lot of traveling. I'm sure that some of you that follow me for years noticed that our content changed a little bit. We stopped doing a lot of funny comedy videos. I was not in the mood to be making silly funny videos. So I decided to start sharing a little bit more of real me makeup the fashion the travel whatever i truly enjoy and i'm happy with on top of that we've been dealing with some lawsuits uh as well but i'm not going to get into that because we are in court so it's been a very difficult and challenging year for us again thankful for all the travel opportunities that kept us distracted and kind of got us out of the house and out of this toxic cycle of just trying to deal with those emotions in a really wrong way so um yeah that's how we're doing right now i guess we're fine we're keeping ourselves distracted we're counting the days when we feel full again but pieces of my heart are missing of my heart as if i had multiple i wish pieces of my heart are still missing and they probably will forever i have a difficult time looking at my phone because the photos of my animals are all over my phone i can't listen to certain songs i can't really talk about it clearly um but things are getting better so we started this year in a very shitty way and we're finishing it in a very good way randy told me once all of that was happening what did you tell me in order to appreciate the best times, you need to understand the hardest times and going through the hardest times allows you to really experience the best times. Exactly. I think that's why I'm so much more appreciative of every single day dealing with those two situations. One, that we were kind of preparing ourselves as much as you can prepare yourself to say goodbye. And then the second that came literally out of nowhere that we absolutely didn't expect taught me much more this year to appreciate every single day because the next day is not promised. So we've been living to the fullest and trying to take all those opportunities to travel, to see the world. world. Also in the previous years, we did sacrifice a lot of those opportunities because we wanted to stay home because Leon was sick, he had cancer. So we were counting the days, we're spending every moment with him we possibly could. And this year we're just kind of trying to catch up on all those opportunities, live our life to the fullest because tomorrow is not promised. But so that was a very long, how am I doing? <laughs> now things are getting better. Time is healing things and we're traveling the world. We're doing a lot of things that truly we could only dream of years ago. So we're extremely grateful for that. Did you ever have an anxious attachment to Randy? If so, how did you overcome? I absolutely have full-blown attachment <laughs> issues. 
to Randy. I did not overcome that. We do both work from home and we both spend 24 seven together. So no, I did not overcome it, but I absolutely am attached. I love doing things with him and I love spending time with him. He's my best friend. I'm attached and I should work on that, but it's kind of hard when you're working 24 seven together. Do you or Randy ever experience jealousy, jealousy of the partner and how do you deal with it? We don't, but I think it's also because of the nature of our work. Like we don't do things really that would cause, huh? We don't now. I was gonna get into that. Yeah, we definitely don't now like definitely not But it's years of being together one and two. It's the nature of our relationship We're truly together 24 7. So there's zero opportunities to do anything shady because we would know. But in the past, Randy was a videographer. He was shooting with a lot of models. So I definitely was way more insecure and not confident in myself and in our relationship, especially. So there was definitely moments where I was extremely jealous. I was also really hurt before in a relationship. So I think that was also an issue. I was never cheated on. I just didn't believe that there is a guy that like it's genuinely like good to the core and wouldn't do anything sketchy. It was in the past, but now definitely not. But I I, I do understand where je jealousy could be coming from, and I think it stems from not being secure in a relationship or not being fully confident in yourself. So that's something that should be talked about and worked on within yourself and with your significant other. Why not Poland this summer? It would be great if you promoted your home country as well. A couple of you messaged me that and I do go to Poland. It's just this year we've had a lot of opportunities that were work opportunities. That's why we did not go to Poland, but I absolutely would love to go to Poland and share it with my audience. I think it's an absolute beautiful country with absolutely beautiful history. I always tell everybody I am Polish. I never claim I'm American. I'm very proud to be Polish. I'm not hiding the fact that I'm Polish and I would love to share it with my audience whenever I go next. How many languages do you speak? I only speak two languages, Polish and English, but I did learn Italian, Spanish and German in school, but because I did not use them, they completely disappeared. But I wish I followed through and like learned more because being a polyglot is actually really cool. Like even being bilingual is pretty cool, but like I wish I could speak more languages. When is your wedding? I feel so much pressure because there is so many email wedding conversations I have to be having and everybody's asking. And to all of you that don't know, we've been married for nine years but we just did a court wedding really quick we've never been engaged so this summer randy proposed to me with my absolute dream dream engagement ring and now we're talking about getting married and having a wedding and it's a lot of work it's extremely stressful we've been traveling and out of the house literally since the moment we got engaged we literally did not like have time at home to like de-stress and decompose even though it's been like what two months so i have not started planning it yet it was supposed to happen next year and i know the venues just book out very fast so it's like something you have to get on and like start planning immediately if you want it to happen next year and we've been in and out in and about constantly so i just did not have time to sit down and start planning all of it so if not 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 next year it's going to be in two years and we're going to be getting married in italy that we know for a fact but the date is not set just yet how did you go to the us and did you go for work or vacay i came to united states as an au pair which is a kind of an exchange program so you live with the family you take care of their kids and they pay for your stay for a couple classes in college so you get to experience an american life and after that I, like i mentioned i was supposed to go back home but i might met randy and stayed but it's i think an au pair program is a very cool way of experiencing a different country and a different culture because you get to live with an actual american family and see their lives and experience 
and everyday life of a completely different culture. For me, it was an absolute culture shock, especially because I lived by myself since I was 13. And now I came to a new country with a new culture, with none of my friends, none of my family, all by myself, different language, different cuisine, different manners. Everything was completely different. And not only that, now I had to share the house with four other people. It was stressful and shocking, but um, I would highly recommend to anybody, just make sure you do your research on the families. There is an interview pro program process, interview process happening. Don't rush it. I spent a lot of time because I really wanted to go to California. So I did not just settle on the first family that accepted me. I truly took a very long time to interview families and find the locations that I really like to be at and highly recommend if you have a year or two to spare. How many piercings do you have? I honestly don't even know. The only piercings I have are on this ear. I did this one by myself and a couple of those by myself, but those higher ones are done professionally. And I only have one here and I did have septum pierced. Randy was in military and he was gone in the field for a couple of months and I got bored and I decided I need to do something wild because I was bored. So I got a septum pierced and I think two days after I took it out because it was just, it, it just wasn't fitting for me. What do you miss the most about not living in Poland? I am very Polish. I think after even so many years in United States, I think there's so many personality traits that I have that are so Polish that I have a very difficult time sometimes fitting in in American culture. But what I miss the most is probably just my family and my friends and the nature too. If you've been to California, it's very dry and not very green in here. There's just a couple of trees here and there. But whenever I go to Poland and I see the green fields and the nature, that's something that I truly, truly miss. That's why I'm also grateful that we travel so much and get to see different climates and different landscapes. Because if not, I would probably go cuckoo just being here the entire time. How big is your luggage when you travel? So many outfits, it's big. <laughs> it's funny though, because Randy's luggages are actually bigger because he has to bring like all the camera gear and stuff. So his luggage is, he usually has more stuff than me, but I usually bring a big luggage and a carry-on and that's like pushing it. Like they're always overweight. I always bring a lot of outfits. That's one of the things that you guys also don't understand. It's not vacation, it's work. So I bring a lot of outfits to shoot them, to wear them in videos and photos and so on. So there's a lot of clothing that comes with me on vacation vacation. I would like to know more about the detox you're doing after traveling and is it worth it? We've done two Elisa Goodman's uh, detoxes and the reason we're doing those compared to anything else, I do believe she only delivers to LA and OC area. So if you're not here, unfortunately, I don't think you can buy it. I, maybe she sells like the PDF that you can do it yourself. But what's nice about this detox that you get the full box of everything you need for either three or five days there's all the meals included the soups the cabbage the supplements everything is included so you don't have to think about it and especially after coming from traveling from different food different water i we love to do the detox and we love this detox because after being jet lagged and not sleeping you don't have to think what to cook what to do you just get your box and just follow the instructions with all the jars that you have packed so it's just very very easy highly recommend Elisa Goodman. The salads and the soups are absolutely delicious. I think detoxes get some bad rep that it has to be like blunt and disgusting food. If you tried her salads and tried her soups, it's like top-notch delicious food. So if you live in LA or OC, I highly, highly recommend trying. When do you think is the best age to have a baby? I don't think there is a specific age for anybody to have a baby. Everybody, we're all on such different paths of our lives. Some people might be ready when they're 23. Some people might be ready when they're 39. Like it, it doesn't really matter. I think age is not 
a good representation of when you're ready for a child i think it's just more here for me personally i know we're in a position where we absolutely can have a child but i also know that we have so many opportunities that if i drop them right now i don't think i would be super happy so i definitely want to do everything i want to do first so that my child gets a very happy satisfied and full mom that lived her life to the fullest prior to not that you can't live the life to the fullest with a baby it's just different like you're not you can't be selfish you have to be in a place where you are able to share yourself with somebody else literally 24 7 you're never gonna be just you and i don't think i'm in that place just yet but i'm getting close maybe like beginning of next year next year okay you guys that was a very very <laughs> long video and we got into some deep things i'm glad we got to or i got to yap about it to you guys i do think sometimes it's easy to talk to the camera and to the audience as like a mini therapy session than it is to an individual one-on-one so Thank you guys for, for this little therapy session with me. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some answers that you were looking for. Let me know if you have any more questions. I can definitely do another of those videos. I did enjoy just sitting here and yapping about everything. So make sure you like, subs like comment and subscribe. And I'm going to see you in my next video.